Oh, so sick of rain, aren't you? I suppose the only good thing about rain is it means I get to do some really cool stuff on my computer. One thing I like to do on my computer is I like to make my own vector graphics. And people keep asking me about the Geek Girl Diary logo. I actually made that myself and I'm going to show you how you can make your own. My name's Carrie Ann and we're going to Geek Girl Diary you. <laughs> So you want a geek girl diary yourself. That's okay, that's what we're gonna do today. I actually created this logo in a program called Adobe Illustrator, which is a vector-based piece of software that allows you to use shapes to draw things. But I'm at home today, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use a very similar piece of software that, that's completely free, so you don't have to pay for it. And that software is called Inkscape. This is the Inkscape website. And if you get yourself there, you will find there is a download option and you are able to download and install Inkscape. And once you download and install it and open it, this is what it looks like. First thing I want to do is I want to sort out my canvas size, the size of the page that I'm going to be drawing my image onto. So if we go to File and Document Properties, in here I'm able to change the size. It's quite big at the moment. It sort of defaults to A4 size which is really, really big. And if you're doing a, uh, an image, maybe for an avatar on a forum or for a Facebook account or a Twitter account, then you're gonna make it, wanna make it a lot smaller. So I would make it, just as a guide, kind of 300 pixels by 300 pixels, just to give you a kind of good size to start with. So that's made my canvas really, really small. It's gonna be difficult, obviously, to see that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna zoom, using the zoom tool, all the way in so I've got my canvas on the screen. The next step is perhaps to have a shape in the background. So on my logo I have a star but just for now if you're a beginner you might want to start just with a simple shape like a circle. So I'm just going to draw something that fills most of the page and then I'm going to move it. So it's filled it in this lovely pink colour because that's the last colour I used but along the bottom you see there are lots of colours so you could pick any colour at this point for your background. And you'll also see that it is filled the inside of the shape but it's not filled the line and we call that line the stroke. If I click this little option over here it allows me to decide on how I want my object to be filled. So maybe I don't just want a block colour, I want to have it so it's kind of a gradient, or maybe I want it a little bit different. I'm gonna leave it as um, solid kind of colour at the moment. I'm gonna go back to my snazzy kind of blue colour. And then I can change the stroke as well. So maybe I want the stroke to be a lighter colour. Oh, but I've clicked that and nothing's happened. The reason is you need to press and hold on the keyboard the shift key and then select the colour that you want and you'll see that that colour changes. And again you can change that so it looks kind of like that, like that, maybe you just want it a solid colour, whatever you want to do. So that's the stroke and fill colours and you'll see down the bottom here it tells you what colours you're using. So if you're filling a shape, here's the colour and your stroke colour is also on there. Remember to press the shift key. Stroke style is also very important. So in here I can change the size of this line. Maybe I want the line to be bigger. I can make it huge. Or I could make it much smaller, depending on whether or not you want to see that line later on. Um, I can change the kind of, the way the line looks. Maybe I don't want it to have one single line. I want it to have dots or dashes or strokes. I want it to look a little bit different. I can do that in this section as well. Ooh, that looks kind of funky. But I think I'm just going to go back and have myself a solid line. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my um, image because I want to have a nice shadow in the background. So I'm going to right click on the shape and click duplicate. And it's actually made an exact copy of the first one, which you can't see. Maybe if I move it. Oh, there it is. Hi. So let's just move it back. I want to change this so that the colour is dark blue and I even almost black want to have um, the stroke filled that way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the blur tool on this side, so I'm going to blur it a little bit, like that. Um, I wouldn't perhaps go that high, we could change the numbers, maybe just make it three, 
on the old blurry front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it. No, I'm not. I'm going to use this button up here instead um, to send it to the back. So now it's behind my original shape. If your shapes don't quite match up with each other, what you can do, you can select the shape of your mouse and you can use the um, arrow keys on your keyboard to move them around. So maybe if I want to line them up a little bit better, you can just move the keys. Because sometimes when you drag shapes, you end up with them all over the place and it can get really frustrating. So sometimes it's just easier to use the keyboard. And um, what I'm going to do next is I don't want to have this line um, around the outside. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just take out that line. So I'm going to use my shift key to change my background. Um, to change my stroke colour, sorry, so it's the same as my fill colour. And then I'm going to duplicate this shape by right clicking and then duplicate. And what I want to do is have an effect in the background, a kind of beveled effect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use um, this tool here, this little pen funny looking tool, and I'm going to draw a box around the outside by clicking once and dragging my mouse and then clicking where I want my points to be and then joining them back up. So I end up with this shape over the top. I want this line along the bottom to be curved, so I'm going to use this tool here, which shows a kind of curve. With my arrow and my mouse, I'm just going to drag this line up. I'll make sure I select the shape first, which I have. And then if I drag it, you can see it's curving. So I want a nice curve on that. Once I'm happy with my curve, I'm going to select that shape and then I want to select the shape underneath it, directly underneath it. So I'm going to use the shift key and I'm going to select my circle. I want to put them on the same path. So I go to path and I'm going to select intersection. Okay, now you can't really see that, but something has happened. I'm going to change the colour of that shape so you can see um, what's happened. There we go. That's now my shape that I did on the top, it's cut it along the path that I've just drawn. Now I'm going to go back up here where my fill and stroke is, I'm going to click on fill and then I'm going to use these options along here, I want to use this one because I want it to have a kind of cool gradient and I want to do the same, I want to get rid of my stroke, this line, I don't want that line to be there, so I'm just going to use my X like that. So now I've got this kind of cool gradient effect on there which I really like. I hope you do too. Um, I can make this so it reaches the edges all the way along. That's what I want to do. Just move this one up. Okay, lining things up can really take a while. It's something I would spend some time on <laughs> if I were you. Um, you might want to blur this shape so you, the line is more blurred. Um, again, you can do that blur tool. Uh, let's just try that one here. So we could blur it a little bit so it doesn't look so sharp. Right, next I guess we want to um, have something on the front now. We've got our background shape. We want uh, maybe a little drawing of you. So that's what we're going to do next. We don't always have to draw within this um, canvas. We can sometimes draw off the screen. That's why we have all this space. So I would suggest draw if anything you're going to put over the top of this shape, we draw over here. So if you get any of it wrong and you want to go back or delete any of it, you can do without spoiling your shape. It might be a good idea to save what you've done so far, maybe save it as a shape, you know, file save as, this is my shape, my background shape. It's probably a good idea to do that now before we start doing anything crazy, crazy. Right, I'm going to use this tool to draw my picture of me. Now, it draws straight lines, so you kind of have to get your head around this first, that you're going to be drawing shape, straight lines to represent you, and then we're going to curve the lines afterwards. So I'm going to very quickly draw um, a, a shape for a face. So I'm going to start down the side of the face and then I'm coming around sort of um, the front. This is sort of the chin area, maybe. Uh, there's the other side. And then I'm going to go around the top of the forehead and then back. Okay, so that's my basic face shape. At the moment my representation of me looks a little bit square and a little bit masculine which I'm not too sure about so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use this tool again remember I could curve the shape so if I select the line and drag it out it will curve the shape so maybe I want to just make it and if I move to one side to the other you can see how it curves so if you you want it directly in the middle then you need to make sure your mouse cursor is in the middle pull this one out a bit more 
still think it looks a bit manly. A bit worried. Uh, let's move these out. So now I've got more of a face kind of shape. But I'm still not sure about the colour of it. The colour's not right. So remember we're going to use our brilliant uh, colours down the bottom. So maybe I'm going to make it uh, this colour. I don't want to get rid of the black line, so shift, same colour. Um, if you think your face is a little bit too small, if you use the arrow, you can stretch it out, make it bigger if you want to. Okay, this is going to end up on the front. Yeah, that kind of looks okay. Next up, hair. I'm going to do hair in exactly the same way. I'm going to draw some shapes. Now, problem is, when I start drawing, I'm not going to be able to see my drawing if I'm going to do it over the top because it's the same colour. So at this point, you might want to find a different colour. Uh, it's just oh, no, I don't really like colour. So maybe you want to do it over here for your hair. Et voila. Uh, how do I want my hair to be today? Let's do that. Right, let's change the colour of that. And then um, I might use my lines again just to drag these things out, make it a little bit more curvy. Terrible fringe. Let's make it a bit bigger. Yeah, it's a bit better. Right, so it's just a matter of drawing shapes, drawing lines, dragging out the lines to make them more curvy, um, using your tools maybe to bring them in, take them out. Oh, I kind of like that. I mean, it's just playing around with it. That's all I've ever done. I'm completely self taught, and I just play around with it until I'm happy with the way it looks. Let's do my um, side, maybe. Yep, let's get my curvy tool. Let's curve out some of these lines a little bit. I mean, it's definitely something you kind of have to play around with. Um, and decide how you want your final picture to look. But it is just a series of shapes. Once you're happy with your overall picture of you, don't forget these are different shapes now because we drew them separately. So to select them all, um, you just select your mouse button and your arrow. And then if you press shift, you can select more than one object. And then what I would do afterwards was I would go to object and I would group them so that they are all one picture because then you can move it around and do what you want with it afterwards. So I've got my background shape, I've got my picture of me, obviously it's not finished yet, but you might want to finish it. The next thing is maybe some text, and fantastic, there's text tool to help me out. I'm just going to draw where I want my text to be, so maybe I want it here, and then you have gazillions of fonts to choose from, um, and if it comes up you don't really have that many, what you can do, um, there's plenty of free font websites where you can download fonts and install them, especially for Windows, it's really easy, you just pop them into your fonts folder and they'll um, appear in any program that you're using. Google have some really great free fonts. So you select font and then you can type, so I'm just going to put geek go. Now, because my typing is of a certain size and it's overrun my box, you won't be able to see it. If you just drag the bottom corner out, it'll all fit in. Or you can just change the size of your text. You can change the colour of your text. Uh, again, down here, using the tools at the bottom. Maybe I want it to be green. Maybe I don't. Um, you can just drag it out, make it bigger, smaller. Change the way it looks. I like that. Move it around. If you select any kind of shape, um, again, you can turn it here. So there we pretty much have all the parts to a good start to a logo. I mean, I've done this very quickly and very basically. I would, if I was going to do this for something uh, more professional or for a final version, obviously I would spend much more time on it than I have done with you. But hopefully you've got the kind of grasp of using shapes, duplicating shapes, moving them around, um, using tools to draw freehand shapes, um, using text. It'd be really exciting to see if any of you make some really cool um, avatars or logos or buttons or stickers or whatever for yourself. It's really good fun to have a go at vector graphics. And once you understand it, kind of the basics of it, 
you can do pretty much anything. If you can make your own graphics, then you can do anything with website design, you can create all your own stuff. Because um, really, some people really struggle with creating their own graphics. So go ahead, have a go, hope you enjoy it. Finally, what I need to do is I need to export it in a form that I can use. Because if I just save this, it's going to save it as an Inkscape file, which is probably not going to be any good to you if you want to use this on a website as an avatar. So the first thing I do is group everything. Once I'm happy with everything is, I just click and drag to select absolutely all the parts of my drawing. And then I'm going to go to Object and I'm going to group them. And then I'm going to go to File and Export Bitmap. And in here I can name it. So um, I'm going to call it uh, me. And then you can browse to where you want to save it on your computer. And then you just export the file. And that's it. It's done. You have yourself an avatar. Good job. So that was a really basic tutorial about how to use um, Inkscape. Hopefully you'll have a go, make some cool pictures and maybe send them to me and so I can see how good they are. Something fun to do on a rainy day. Good luck. My name's Carrie-Anne. Remember, I'm just a mouse click away. Thank you.